Hello, my name is Linda Chanard, and I will be interviewing Norman Pirolo, furniture designer and maker. I will be asking him a few questions today. What drives your passion of woodworking? Well, I get to create tangible objects. Uh, woodworking provides a uh, component of problem solving for me. It invokes my right brain or creative side, the never ending excitement of creating a functional or decorative object from, uh, from raw wood continues to excite me. Next to no technology is necessary in my work. So I love challenges and introduce new design elements in each furniture piece to learn new and difficult techniques. And this uh, drives my passion and continues to drive my passion after about 30 years of woodworking and furniture making. Which furniture maker had the most influence on you? Your style and aesthetic? Through, uh, through studies at an advanced furniture making school, I was drawn to the work and philosophy of uh, James Krenoff. I admire his work and pragmatic philosophy. Krenoff takes furniture making to, uh, to the next or another level. He doesn't simply make furniture, but composes a piece with attention to detail. Krenoff did not want wood to be simply viewed as a uh, medium. His approach involved a deep appreciation of uh, wood and its inherent beauty or flaws. Unlike other approaches to the craft, Krenov first began with wood selection, then developed a design or composed a, uh, the wood into a furniture piece. The wood became the focal point of the furniture piece. His furniture style had roots in a mid-century Scandinavian aesthetic, and this is what drew me in. I love to create timeless designs and find Scandinavian style has a pragmatic approach with both a balanced function and form. Scandinavian uh, design is devoid of ornamentation and demonstrates honest design. This is the style I have embraced in my work. I admire the clean lines and contemporary aesthetic of this style. How much of the furniture in your home did you make? Uh, good question. I create furniture primarily on spec or commission. There isn't always a buyer for a spec piece, so it goes into the home until I can find a buyer. So lately I've been creating uh, well-mounted cabinets since floor space is almost fully occupied by my, uh, my furniture. I develop a system where I can interchange wall-mounted cabinets when I create a new one, and this provides variety. I also enjoy creating furniture with a small form factor or footprint and locating it in the corners of a room. My latest series reflects this style. I hope this has answered the question. If you could restart your career, would you have chosen furniture making? Actually, this is my second career. While working on my first or my high, the former high-tech career, I stumbled onto woodworking through a weekend class at a local community college. One thing led to another and I slowly became immersed into uh, woodworking. So this took place in my very late 20s and early 30s. It then became a, a situation where I was catching up with uh, and acquiring as much knowledge as I could. I devoured everything woodworking for several years, sort of a fast-paced exposure to woodworking and furniture making. Now, let's not forget this was a period just prior to the internet, so everything was, uh, all learning was book-based, it was based on books. So if I had been introduced to uh, furniture making early on as a career option, I might have selected this, my furniture design for that matter. Although less paying than my, uh, my former career, I continue to be excited and motivated with uh, woodworking and furniture making. It fulfills all my ambitions and it is a uh, timeless craft. I find I engage my mind as much as my hands with this, uh, with this craft of woodworking and furniture making. Do you prefer designing furniture or making furniture? I find it is important to have a good design and not simply jump into a furniture build for different reasons. Good design meets several criteria in a furniture piece. I usually go through an exhaustive design process before investing time and material, materials into a build. Early on in my woodworking career, I was more anxious to simply build furniture. I later realized that the build would be far more successful if it was based on a good design. 
So design is an acquired skill. Although it can be a tedious process, it is exciting to see an idea or initial sketch evolve into a skill drawing with measurements, with or without measurements. I would uh, have to say that although I prefer to be making, the importance of good furniture design is uh, critical. I would also like to add that I have a great appreciation of the furniture design process. I focus considerably on uh, developing a design from a concept through uh, sketching, drawing, to scale models, to prototyping a design prior to actually investing time and material into building it. And this has uh, provided me uh, excellent results without uh, wasting any time and uh, material, expensive, expensive wood in a, in a flawed design. In your opinion, what is the best way for someone to learn woodworking? So having studied woodworking and furniture making at two schools, I understand the uh, importance of a structured approach to learning. It is crucial to learn woodworking from the ground up. Although certain aspects of the learning process can become tedious, a good knowledge of the basics are critical to pursuing woodworking as either a hobby or a career. So simply viewing YouTube videos can get somebody by what is missing are learning and understanding the essential basics of woodworking. So I'm referring to the why and the how of woodworking. Now with this in mind, I've created several online woodworking courses ranging from uh, basic woodworking to uh, furniture design and making. I can share my three decades of woodworking exper expertise and experience through these courses. The courses provide the structured approach I'm, I've just referred to. So nothing is skipped and all aspects of woodworking are exhaustively covered through a well-developed curriculum. Aside from attending live classes at a woodworking school, I feel a structured approach is the only way to successfully learn woodworking. I've developed my, my role as a woodworking educator and developed these courses to, uh, to further the craft of woodworking to, uh, to our youth and to uh, people, uh, to novice woodworkers and people interested in working with their hands. And uh, as I probably mentioned, I'm an advocate of uh, hand tool woodworking. Where do you see the future of the woodworking craft? I often give thought to this as it causes me to reflect on the path I've chosen and my, uh, my own legacy. There has been a resurgence or revival in woodworking today, more so than ever. People miss working with their hands and creating uh, tangible objects. People have become disillusioned with the uh, technological lifestyle we've adopted. Hand tool woodworking has seen a revival due to, the, due to the small spaces required to perform this type of woodworking. It also creates a quieter environment where woodworking can be performed with relatively few hand tools. So it's become critical to pass our furniture and making and woodworking skills to the next generation of youth as it is no longer being taught in schools. Uh, schools seem to have prioritized technology instead, unfortunately. So technology has entered woodworking at the hobby level through CNC machines. I don't mind this, but only if it plays a secondary role to the traditional woodworking. Embracing CNC at the expense of conventional woodworking only leads to further loss of the craft and the hand skills it brings. Overall, I'm positive that the craft of woodworking will continue into future generations as people seek an alternative to a technology-saturated world. If I haven't mentioned, I'm, a, I'm, a, uh, I'm an advocate of using hand tools in woodworking and the, uh, and the skills it brings the hand-to-eye -eye coordination, the fact that we're working with our hands, and although it's a little more, it's far slower than working with CNC or any, any uh, technology-driven woodworking, the satisfaction you derive from working with your hands overrides or surpasses that uh, the speed component of, uh, of creating furniture. So instead of focusing on on uh, on speed, on creating furniture quickly, it's I advocate focusing on the, uh, on the journey or the process of creating the furniture, and learning new skills and, and, and techniques that you can eventually will, will speed your woodworking up regardless because you, even though you're working with your hands, much like we used to work uh, 100, 150, 200 years ago, they, uh, they quickly created furniture without use, uh, use of machinery prior to the industrial age. They developed techniques to work with, uh, with, with 
jigs and, uh, and other uh, aids to woodworking along with hand tools to, to speed up some production regardless of the fact that machines were not, uh, had, not been, uh, had not been discovered or created or invented at that point. Hope that answers the question, but I'm, I'm very positive about woodworking and, uh, and, and uh, I see it actually making an even larger resurgence as, as technology embeds itself into our life and we seek an alternative to, the, to technology and, uh, and revert back to, uh, to using hand tools or, or hand, hand crafts, woodworking, furniture making, many other crafts and embrace that the satisfaction that derived from the, from the crafts.